Hi, I never go first. <laughs> so this is fun. You're um, first tonight. <laughs> um, hi, everyone. My name is Hannah Traore, and I am class of 2017. Um, I'm actually now on um, the Skidmore Board of Trustees as well. And I own an art gallery in New York City. Excited to hear more about that, Hannah. Okay, Janine, you are next. Hey, guys, I'm going to apologize for any barking. My dog is very hyped up at the moment, so I'm sorry about that. Um, my name is Janine. I graduated in 2018. Um, I'm from Portland, Oregon, but I live in D.C. Hey, buddy. I'm so sorry. Um, and I'm Senator Tim Kaine's communications director. So my job is helping um, manage his relationships with reporters, setting up his interviews, staffing his interviews, writing statements, editing everything that goes out the door, um, and helping him kind of set his um, media strategy so we can help uh, the great people of Virginia know about the work that he's doing. And hopefully with that, he'll calm down shortly. Sorry. It's okay, right? Our fur babies get excited about change makers and what we do. And when they see us excited, they get excited. So it just makes us all more real. So uh, Mike, you are you are next. Hi, I'm Mike Natter. I'm uh, from New York City and I went to Skidmore. I graduated in 2008. Um, I'm, a, I'm a doctor, so I'm a doctor in New York City. I'm an endocrinologist, um, but I also identify as an artist and I actually studied art at Skidmore primarily. Um, and I found that utilizing my art is what allowed me to excel in medical school and also to my patients. I'm able to explain things using drawing, which has been really fantastic. Um, and I'm also a type one diabetic. So that kind of what uh, compelled me to, to go into endocrinology and, and help other folks who deal with this as well. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes change is, is deeply personal and that's where it starts. So, um, and Sybil, introduce yourself. Hi everyone, I am Sybil Newell. Um, I'm from the class of 1999, and I am currently the executive director of a nonprofit that works with individuals living with mental illnesses and addictions and a range of other challenges like homelessness and chronic illnesses. And um, I run this nonprofit right here in Saratoga Springs. So I came to school at Skidmore and then I never left. So I've been here for quite a while working in the community. We love that. We love that. I mean, even if you do leave Skidmore, you really never leave Skidmore. And I think we're hearing a little bit of that um, from each of you, right, as you've described um, how you are change makers in the world. So, you know, as you all know, um, at Skidmore, we really believe that creative thought matters. Um, it permeates everything we do here. And, and I really think it's a huge distinction of Skidmore. And we created the series to really help students and families understand this difference. So the question for all of you, um, and I'll, I'll let whoever is most excited to answer first lean in, um, but how did Creative Thought Matters influence your experience at Skidmore? Um, and, and how has it prepared you for, for what you're doing right now? So give us that first part of the journey. So is anyone excited to go first? I can, I can start again. <laughs> um, so that is such, honestly, creative thought and Skidmore um, are both such a huge part of my story and where I am today. I was an art history major at Skidmore. And though I loved writing my long papers, I was tired of it by the time I got to senior year. And because there's such an encouragement to be creative and to kind of think out the outside of the box um, and to critically think, um, I decided to go to the um, director of the Tang Museum and ask if I could curate an exhibition there instead of writing a paper for my senior thesis um, to get honors. And because Skidmore um, really encourages that kind of behavior. He said yes. <laughs> and so I was able to work both with the art history department and the Tang Museum um, to curate this exhibition. And actually, this is a really beautiful kind of full circle moment because on my way home from the gallery today, I had a FaceTime call with an artist named Micheline Thomas, who I had in the show at Skidmore. And she actually just hired me to curate a show um, for a program that she does. So it's, and, and, you know, um, Earlier today, I had a call with Hassan Hajaj, who was also in the show, who the director of the Tang invited to um, come speak with me. And um, so I got to interview him. He's doing a show at the gallery. So 
And not to mention the fact that the director and many of my professors are still kind of involved in my journey. Um, the Tang Museum was the first museum to buy anything from my gallery and it, and the piece is actually hanging right now in the Tang Museum. So I think I'd have the confidence to uh, go out and do something different because my gallery also um, is not a typical gallery. We show only artists from underrepresented groups, but we focus on the quality of the work and, you know, not tokenizing the artists, but also kind of expanding the idea of what can be seen in a gallery. So we do installations as well. We have a whole installation room. And that is the most Skidmore thing um, imaginable. And it's really kind of set me apart in um, the, the art world. And um, yeah, I really got that kind of confidence from my my Skidmore experience. I would not have a gallery without Skidmore and the Tang, without a doubt. I love how you connected creativity with confidence in particular, right? Right. I mean, among the amazing things you just shared. Okay. Who wants to share next, right? This happens, Sybil, Sybil, go ahead. I can go, um, mostly because um, Hannah, you know, that theme of confidence, I was thinking the exact same thing. Um, when I came to Skidmore, I was a quieter person. I didn't, I didn't always speak up in class. I didn't always, I wasn't always raising my hand or sitting in the front. Um, but every time I did engage and every way I did engage, it was very welcomed. And even if I wasn't, um, you know, saying the same things other people were saying, or if I wasn't agreeing with, with what was being taught necessarily, it was really welcomed and um, encouraged. So I learned a lot of confidence at Skidmore. I can definitely say that it taught me to really speak up. Um, I was someone who uh, changed my major three times. So I wasn't actually sure what I wanted to do for a very long time. Um, I think I always kind of knew, but I, I, I wasn't going where I am now initially. Um, but I think what, what really brought me there was that it wasn't so much that I was being... Um, taught information so much as it was I was being taught how to think how to how to think how to work my way around problems how to come at things from unique angles and um, I think we can all really um you know relate to that in in all of, in all of our careers and all of our paths that we've chosen use that every day all day <laughs> all the time right mm -hmm. yeah Okay, Mike, yeah. I'm happy to go. So, you know, Skidmore really set me on a path that um, kind of changed the trajectory of my life, in all honesty. So I grew up, I grew up in New York City as an art kid. I would paint, I would draw, I would do everything I could to stay away from math and science because it was something that scared the hell out of me. I wasn't good at it. I was told I wasn't good at it, and I believed it. Um, there's no medicine in my family. Um, so when I, when I went to Skidmore, I like lavished in the studio arts. I loved the smell of the Saiseline art building. I loved getting the charcoal all over my hands. I just loved everything about it. And when I would finish a three hour, you know, figure drawing class, I, did, I didn't want to leave. I was like, this is home for me. Um, but I had other interests. And because of my type one diabetes diagnosis in childhood, I was fascinated by physiology and fascinated by medicine. I just thought I couldn't. I thought it wasn't for me. Um, I equate looking at like, you know, uh, being on the subway and seeing, you know, a physician or a doctor or someone in scrubs, like seeing an astronaut, you know, something, uh, a sense of awe would come over me and I'd be so amazed by what they did and what they could do. Um, but it wouldn't be something I could ever do. Um, yet I would want to be able to try. So Skidmore, uh, eventually I, I kind of found myself taking classes that I was interested in. And so I found myself in neuroscience classes and I, gained an academic confidence in myself that I had not previously had because the professors kind of saw that I had this interest, this raw interest and um, this timid sense of, you know, really imposter syndrome. And they took me under their wing, specifically one in particular that brought me into his lab uh, and said, come on, we're going to do, you know, a project in my lab. I was like, well, no, no, I'm not that kid. Like, I don't do honors things. I'm not smart like that. And he's like, what are you talking about? Just, just come and do it. It's fun. And uh, it proved to me that um, I wasn't dumb and that things that were rather, rather intimidating um, and my skill set as an artist actually was um, helpful. Um, and looking at problems and through a creative lens and through a different perspective was not only encouraged, but it, it actually yielded better results. 
So, um, you know, fast forward to medical school, I found myself drawing and I would draw my notes out. And initially that was quite a um, thing I would be embarrassed by. I would hide actually, because I wouldn't want my colleagues to see me as taking something as serious as medical school, you know, by doodling cartoons. But it was by drawing and translating very difficult to understand medical physiology into my own visual language that allowed me to didactically digest that information, retain it, retrieve it, and then utilize it. And now today I get to draw for my patients. I did it you know, in clinic a number of times today because these are topics that are so complicated that despite your language barriers, your cultural barriers, your um, education barriers, when you draw and use imagery, it flattens all of that. And that effective communication is then utilized in such a really beautiful way and creates a nice rapport with the patient. Um, and, and I really think I owe a lot of that to Skidmore. Um, so I, I would say that's, that's my, and my full circle story is I had a patient who I saw yesterday a lot younger than I, um, and I always like to ask about my patients and where they're from and what they do. And we made the connection that we both had gone to Skidmore um, and it was a really fun connection, so. That's awesome. I'll, I'll jump in. Um, I think uh, um, Skidmore really gave me the freedom, I think, to pursue all my interests in a way that I think if I was going to a different school, I probably would have had to pick between things that I liked. And so I edited the student newspaper. Um, I was a political science major and I was on the writing team and I was a captain of the writing team for two years. Um, and I think like from the newspaper, I was able to really pursue like my interest in writing um, and the news industry and political science, obviously studying the politics, how to use policy to try to make the world a better place. Um, and then on the writing team, like being a, te a part of a team of 30 people and then leading that team really taught me a lot that is super helpful to me now because I manage a team of people and I feel like a team boss, but I was really able to like, I think from that early exposure that I had to, um, to being able to write a lot, you know, pursuing the, the interest in politics and then also being a part of a team and leading a team really all came together and helped me like help prepare me for what I do now, which involves all those things. Um, and I just think that gave me like a really big head start. Like, frankly, I'm very young for my job. And I think that having that early exposure and being able to check those boxes in college really helped like set me on like a accelerated trajectory um, to give me exposure to those things um, very early on. I'm really grateful for that. And I think like because Skidmore really encourages you to think creatively about what you want your student life to look like and what you want to learn that gave me the freedom to do that and i didn't have to choose so i'm, re I'm really thankful hmm. i mean so many great messages and what the four of you have have just shared right so you know it started with creativity right but i think all of you touched upon um being encouraged to to be curious and, and curiosity, right, doesn't always make assumptions about what you're going to major in or or what to think. I mean, Sybil, you talked about learning to to think critically and to question things, right? And, um, <clears throat> you know, Hannah, you talked about having the confidence to to do something a little bit different, right? And, and to blend, and I mean, several of you talked about sort of blending different passions and interests. And certainly we, we talk a lot at Skidmore about how you're encouraged to, to do both, right? You can be, you know, you can come in like Mike, you know, with your fingers in the charcoals and um, and really immersing yourself in the arts and, and be encouraged to either step outside your comfort zone or to try something new. And, and that's where you discover yourself. And you don't just discover it, but you get to forge yourself, right? You have a very intentional choice in this, this path and the identities that you start to develop um, with, you know, with great faculty and, and all of that. So, so the question next, um, that I have for each of you is that, you know, in the admissions office, we get tons of questions. How does Skidmore prepare you for, you know, life after Skidmore, a great job or strong outcomes? Um, and you've each touched on this a little bit, but, you know, can think a little bit about, um, you know, some, some of the tools, right? Or an experience at Skidmore, whether that was, um, uh, you know, study away or an internship or, or something like that, that allowed you to be, you know, successful um, at some point in your journey since Skidmore. So what would you say? I can jump in first on this one um, since uh, I went last the last time. Um, I think through a liber the liberal arts education and specifically at Skidmore, I think that 
being forced to not forced but encouraged to take classes in a really broad range of topics and subjects was really ended up being I mean I enjoyed it at the time but I think I uh, in my professional life now I like call upon the skills that I learned in like okay you get dropped into a new subject or a new you know a new professor new department and have to learn like a new approach to tackling a subject or a different way of thinking about something like in my job now I touch like every policy issue area under the sun and I might like get a call from a reporter that says like, hey, I want to know more about like the farm bill. I might not know anything about the farm bill, but I have an hour to become an expert in that thing. And that involves like talking to all different people who have their own approaches to thinking about an issue. Like being a quick study is really important in my job. And I think that because I had to have all these different experiences with different subject matters through a liberal arts education at Skidmore, that really helped me figure out like, what do I need to know? How do I need to approach an unfamiliar topic or subject and become an expert in a very short amount of time? Um, and I just don't think that you can gain that skill that, that like quick on your feet, critical thinking um, as easily if you are just like siloed in one subject or one like niche concentration for all four years. So I'm really thankful that it's good more um, that's not the case. And it's also fun. So on top of that, funny and useful, what more could you want? Lifelong learning, Janine. I mean, that, that's, I mean, how cool is it that your job, right, in any given day, right, could, could point you in another direction. That's fabulous. I just want to piggyback on what Janine said. I, I totally agree. And I feel like when you have a, a more broad basis, like a foundation of education, that's so different and, um, you know, it's like sampling from a buffet. And what it does is it, it makes you more well-rounded. And so I could say I'm fortunate enough to sit on committees of admission um, where I work at NYU for medical school and for not for much for medical school, more for residency and fellowship. And I can tell you that what I look at is I flip through that they went to Harvard or Yale. I flip through that they cured cancer or, you know, cured AIDS. Like, I don't care because to me, that doesn't necessarily tell me what they're going to be like as a physician. I don't care they had the 4.0 and the great MCAT score. I look to see what they've done with their life outside of that. Have they interacted with people? Were they a waiter? Were they a bartender? You know, that kind of real life experience, um, you know, it, it tells me something. If someone studied at a place like Skidmore, it tells me that they've had exposure to different types of, you know, perspectives and different types of courses. And I, I actually think that's far more valuable um, than, you know, would be seen on the surface. So my experience at Skidmore, I think, really allowed me to absorb the medical sciences in a way that a lot of my colleagues uh, really couldn't take in in the same way. I mean, and that describes a lot of our, you know, approach in the admission office at, at Skidmore too, right? That it's, it's, it's how you go about the process of learning, right? And, and I mean, I think one of the other things that's resonating with what you're all sharing is, right, creativity has sort of an inclusive nature of inviting in different perspectives and ideas and, and not taking things at face value, right? So Sybil, I thought I saw you lean in. Do you wanna go next? Um, sure, I'd be happy to. Um, so I've, I've just really been kind of, everything you're saying is is triggering other me to think of other things. Um, a part, the part about becoming um, an expert fast. Um, when I was at Skidmore, I, I became an excellent researcher. That's one thing, you know, so I feel like I had the opportunity to explore anything I wanted to. And I could always you could always relate your your passions back to um, whatever else it was you were studying. A number of you have said this. I came in as a music major and I ended up in psychology. So I think we all kind of are artists in one way or another. And then we've we've been able to integrate the artistic part of ourselves into um, you know, different areas of thought that we wanted to explore. So I remember doing a lot of um, research in music therapy and art therapy and all and all of these things that now I actually am bringing to the people that I serve in in our agency and um, using these modalities throughout our our programs. So it's been really nice to be able to kind of make those connections and see how that has come to fruition. At least for me, it's been really nice to to bring that all together. Um, another thing that I um, was thinking when you talked about if people have been waiters or what they or, or or what else they've been doing in their outside life, I think is really important. Um, when I was at Skidmore, I worked in the the um, the daycare, 
And the daycare center is for the, um, I think it's it, at the time, at least it was primarily for the children of the professors. So I was um, working in there, you know, watching all of their children, they would come in and there's a window and they could look through and like watch you working with their children. <laughs> and that was really a little bit intimidating, but it was also, it, it was great, you know, and um, I got a lot of feedback from professors who saw me working with their children that kind of encouraged me to to go into the field that I'm in in now. Um, and I've also had this, you know, I, I mentioned before that I'm still in Saratoga Springs and it's been very cool for me to see all the connections of what the professors at Skidmore are also doing in the community where I live now. Um, the commissioner of finance, for the city of Saratoga Springs is a Skidmore professor and I work with her on a daily basis. That is very cool. Um, you know, a, a business owner downtown is a Skidmore professor. I've known him for lots of years. And, um, I, you know, I also still interact um, with, uh, with the students by offering internships. So that's something, my kind of full circle moment that I've been enjoying so much these last couple of years is um, I think we've had about 20 or 25 students do their internships with my organization now. And they're working with people who are um, homeless, they're working in our shelter or they're working in our community residences or they're working you know, with people who are struggling with substance use and really great hands-on experience that they're getting. And it just makes me, gives me those warm fuzzies because I remember going through all of that stuff myself and, and trying to make sure I'm giving them as much as I possibly can. Yeah, yeah. Hannah, do you want to round us out? Sure. Um, such great answers. I would agree with all of those. As, uh, I'm trying to. I have so many answers that I'm trying to like consolidate them. Um, also, the fact that you kind of have to take multiple different classes and do multiple different things. I think just the transferable skills in general that you learn from that um, has helped me not only in work but just in in life I feel like that's a true education kind of like Janine was saying um, if I just studied art history I would be extremely educated in that department but I feel like I'm extremely educated period um, and I feel like and 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 I feel like at Skidmore specifically every class it sounds maybe cheesy but it's actually very true every class kind of infuses like the learning of empathy in like even in my ceramics class I, I'm not joking with you um, and so I do feel like even if you're taking a class in biology, you're learning how to be a good person. It, it honestly does really, now that I'm saying it sound cheesy, but it is the truth. Um, and on top of that, I think also kind of because you're so, um, you get so close to your professors, um, that actually has really helped me in my career because I still am very close to some of my professors and I actually go to them for advice. Often they become mentors. Um, and so I was just up at Skidmore the other week and, you know, I'm having a specific issue with the gallery and I went and I like cried to my professor from seven, eight years ago. Do you know what I mean? And um, so it, it's not like that learning or help or support stops. And I think that's very um, important as well. I mean, you're touching upon the humanity, right, of all of us as we go through through our lives. I mean, what you all are sharing is, is so profound. And, and even in the chat, the students are saying, these stories are so inspiring. Um, I mean, you're doing amazing things and that can be a little bit intimidating um, to, you know, to students who, who may be watching the video tonight. So, you know, imagine your 17 year old self doing the college search and dreaming up your future and, and not being the amazing self you are right now. Um, so the last question, what kind of advice would you give your former self um, to get you where you are today? So we'll, we'll, do, we'll do a quick round robin of that before we go into breakout rooms. I know I'm throwing a curveball at you. I would say um, I have a couple of things. One is trust yourself. Um, and, and part of that is learning yourself so that you can trust yourself, trust your instincts. Um, and when it, when it comes to specifically college admission stuff, visit because I the reason I chose Skidmore is because I visited and I felt so at peace and happy um, on campus and it was the best decision I ever made and so please visit um, and just know that um, you yeah you need to trust yourself yeah, we oh, did. I'm sorry, one more. go ahead yeah. always ask for help 
never ever feel like you have to do things alone ask for help if someone says no they say no but always ask I, I have to say that 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 is the best advice, Hannah, more than anything, but for life um, in the hospital, it's a very scary place when you're training. And there is this horrible sense of, oh, you now have an MD after your name, you know everything mm -hmm. and you do not and you know nothing. And I always tell my interns and my residents, I would much rather you ask me a question and say and, and admit, you know, even if it's the dumbest question you could possibly think of, I'd much rather you tell me and ask me than you risk hubris and you hurt someone or you injure someone or something happens. And I think that's so true and it's so apropos of everything. And again, to your point, Hannah, I, I think trusting yourself is so key. I, you know, imposter syndrome is so rampant in medicine, but I think it's rampant in, in life. And I, I still suffer from it without a doubt, but it's a spectrum and I've become uh, less paralyzed by my imposter syndrome and more grounded by it, as opposed to kind of falling into the cocky side, uh, which I'm, I'm grateful for. But when I was 17, 18, 19, I was paralyzed by my imposter syndrome. I thought I could not do something. I thought I was dumb. I thought it wasn't in the cards for me. I, you know, when I, when I hang out with my art friends, I identify as a doctor. When I'm with my doctor friends, I identify as an artist. Like I never want to have the moniker of something that I have an expectation for. But the truth is, um, Believing in yourself and really understanding that um, there's an, a personal arc to everyone and 17, 18, 19 years old is, is a really pivotal time in your life and you're really coming into yourself and you're kind of at the, the beginning of a really momentous experience. And, you know, I can say that being at a place like Skidmore, a very liberal arts, a very um, kind of creative and welcoming and warm environment, um, it really makes a big difference. And in terms of trusting yourself, um, it, don't feel like you have to know right now what you want to do with the rest of your life. I think that's really, that's really big. This, I mean, you're so young, you're really at the beginning. Um, explore what you want to explore, check, check a lot of things out. Um, and whenever you feel a passion for something, kind of follow that. That took me where I really needed to go. And I thought that that was really um really important that Skidmore allowed for that sort of experience. I couldn't agree more with what everybody is. Oh my gosh, stop. Um, what everybody has shared, especially like, I mean, I think like casting a wide net is the one piece I think I would add on to what everybody has already said. Like, I think the people I know, like reflecting on my own experience, like choosing a college, going to college, finding a job after college, like the people I know who had like the most narrow rigid idea of like what they wanted and that was going to be it and they weren't open to entertaining other ideas those are the people who I think were have been the least happy um but I think people who and I I've tried to do this and you know easier said than done do this as much as I can of like being open to life and open to opportunity and like obviously fighting for the things that I want but being um you know having an open mind and casting a wide net about what my life looks like um and i think to sybil's point like if you just follow your interests you might not see how the dots are going to connect like on day one but if you just keep going and pursue the things that interest you um you know and hopefully end up in a place like skidmore where you will be encouraged to do that um it will come together over time um so don't you know don't feel like you have to see the whole picture um immediately but if you just keep following the things that um you know that speak to you uh, you might find jobs that you didn't even know existed. If you're looking at it from a like career outcome perspective, like you might discover jobs you didn't even know existed. Like I didn't know that my job existed. Um, and so, but I got there because I had the room to pursue the interests that, you know, prepared me for this. So have an open mind. I mean, what, what amazing advice you all are giving, right? And, you know, all this stemming from, right? Creative thought matters, right? Creativity invited you in, in your Skidmore experience, created opportunities to learn, to think critically, to bring in new ideas, different opposing viewpoints of not only what you were learning, but of your expectations of yourselves and what you thought was ahead for you versus 
sort of what transpired by being a full participant and engaging at Skidmore with your community, with your faculty members who said, hey, Mike, you're going to do this lab. Hey, Hannah, it's totally fine. We're going to have you do this senior art thesis, right, um, here at the Tang. And, you know, that that openness, there, there's some vulnerability there, right? And I think you all mentioned a little bit of that. But, wow, I mean, how amazing um, that each of you have gone these different journeys um, through your Skidmore experience. So thank you so much for sharing that with all of us here tonight. We we so appreciate you. 